let's go with the next scale. Be careful of present participles. I talked about phrases. I told the phrases are group of logically related words less than a sentence they lack the subject they lack the verb sometimes they are some verb forms when they have the verb form they are either infinitive participial or gerund if they are infinitive they can be noun adjective and adverb if they are participial they can be present participle or past participle present participle and past participles are always adjective present participles and past participles are always adjectives but gerunds which are the verb forms and the verb plus ing and they look like the present participles they are not adjectives they are always noun here we have to be careful about the present participles why because they confuse us sometimes they are part of the progressive verb so as you see here the boy is standing so standing is a verb form and it ends in ing but it is a part of progressive word it is a continuous tense okay but here the boy which is the subject standing in the corner standing it has a verb form but there is no be verb so it is a present participle and it's always post modifier here it's a post modifier and it is always an adjective as you see in is a preposition there is a non marker these two are the non markers corner is a noun in the corner is is what preposition plus object of the preposition are either adjective or an adverb in the corner where in the corner standing where in the corner adverb of preposition an adverb can come before the verb and modify the verb looks is the verb it is singular because because boy is the noun and it is the subject it is singular boy looks suspicious so standing is an adjective it's not a verb never ever take it as a verb in a sentence we have only one verb and that is in the predicate predicate is the verb and whatsoever comes after that it means the complement verb plus the complement suspicious is our complement as an adjective what kind of adjective this is an adjective because the verb is one of the linking verbs a linking verb shows a connection rather than an action it shows a connection between subjective complement and the subject this is the subject and this is subjective complement it completes and it identifies the subject so the boy looks suspicious the boy is suspicious what are these linking verbs remember this tabe gole farce or Tape Co 
pull it for us. Okay? T stands for taste. It's very hard to write. Let me see, can I type? Okay. Good. Taste. When it means mazedadan, nacheshidan. وقتی که معنای چشیدن میده یعنی شما دارین یک کاری انجام میدین بس نمیتونه جزء افعال ربطی باشه که رابطه بین فاعل و فعل رو نشون بده it doesn't show any connection between the subject and the verb when it is showing an action taste something means doing an action but taste delicious means actually showing the a uh, relationship between the subject and a verb then another t can you help me ladies and gentlemen turn turn means shodan not gashtan not going around okay turn means shodan means become the light turns red cherakh Okay. What else? B. Become. Again, Shodan. B. To be. To be means am, is, are, was, were, will be, being, been, anything which shows this connection as a linking word G get means shodan grow means shodan na rusht kardan grow shodan means become look L look if you say look at that car you are doing an action so this is not a linking verb it's an action verb but here look means seem sound like this one the boy looks suspicious it is one of the linking verb verbs what else F fall fall به معنی افتادن نیست we fall in love okay we fall in love آیا اینجا fall in love باید verbatim ترجم بشه مگه چه نوع سقوط آزادیه که این حرف اضافه از love اسم حرف اضافه با مفعول حرف اضافه یا صفت یا قیده fall in love کدومه عملی انجام میدین یا شدنه کدومه fall به معنی شدن the trees fall red درختان قرمز شدن fall به معنی شدن feel احساس کردن a appear به نظر رسیدن r remain 
ماندن س stay ماندن stay calm remain calm س سیم به نظر رسیدن ساوند به نظر رسیدن سمل بو دادن نه بویدن بویدن از ان اکشن اوکی بوی دلنگیزی میدهد این عطر بوی خوبی میدهد اوکی سمیلز نایس This perfume smells nice, so it is a linking verb. It shows the connection between the subject and the subjective complement. You know the subjective complement can be a noun or an adjective. Here there are adjectives. Immediately after these verbs we expect to see an adjective. Then put, put, prove. It proves difficult. Prove here sabit kardan nis. Chon amali anjam nemidim. Prove means budan. Prove means to be. It proves feasible. Budani shodani. It proves difficult. So, as you see, we have an adjective. K. K means keep. Keep means remain stay keep and in keep calm after all these words we expect to see the adjective as you see here well yes any any point Seper, do you have any point to add well Oh. No, sir. no, sir. I was just disconnected. Okay. The present participle works as an adjective, always as an adjective. Participial phrases are always adjective. When they are present, they take the ing form. If it doesn't have the B, so it is not a verb. It is an adjective. So, The boy is standing. So standing, there is no be form. So it's not a progressive verb. It's not a present uh, continuous tense. And we have to be very careful because they just set off the subject from the verb. These are intervening elements. Again, be careful of the past participle. The past participle or... They are participial phrases. They are always ad adjective. Okay? Do not confuse them with the following. When the verb is regular, a past participle, when the verb is regular, the past participle takes ed. Otherwise, there are something around 600 verbs in English and they just fall in eight different categories of irregular verbs. You can find uh, this book in my Telegram channel, Dr. Nezakat Kutofel. If you just browse there, you will find a book with something around 600 or more uh, verbs and these verbs are uh, actually uh, irregular verbs they do not take this pattern so if they have if you see any ed uh, form be careful because not all ed forms or past participles uh, are the verb okay so the past participle can cause confusion and grammar because a past participle can be either an adjective or a part of verb it it can be a part of verb or it can be simple past tense as you see here 
She painted the picture. This is a simple past tense. It's a verb. So the past participle is the form of verb that appears with have or be. So they come either with have, the verb have, or be. Am, is, are, was, were, will be, being, whatsoever. So as you see here, this is a part of verb. This is a part of verb. It is not a verb. It is here, it is a verb. It is a part of verb, but they are not adjectives. These are a part of verb. When there is no have, there is no be verb, and they do not stand as the verb in the sentence, they can function as an adjective. So, the picture painted looks wonderful. The picture is the subject. Painted. So, there is a verb form, an ed. So, if I take it as a verb, then I will see another verb. So two verbs for one sentence, impossible. So the second verb function as a predicating word. So it shows the connection. It shows how picture is connected to the subjective complement, which is wonderful. It is an adjective here. And this painted again is an adjective it is a post modifier it modifies picture it tells us so as you see an adjective can come before the noun and can come after the noun here this is an adjective and this adjective post modifies the noun and we should not be confused because it is not a verb. If it doesn't have a be or have, it is not a verb. Hope. So far, so good. We did whatever we needed, and now it's time to answer some questions. And these questions. Um, are from the book and you can find them on page 106 106 we have some questions number one let's ask uh, Sogand then RF yes. then Sina Sogand, RF, Sina all of you what is the best answer? Just type. I think you um, answered this question last, last, last session. No it was choice A. Okay, just so GAND A, Sino A, and RF A. Very good. Um, let's start with ladies first. So GAND. So GAND. Yes. yes. Why not D? Uh, uh. Um, because, um, sorry, because we're, um, if we choose B located in the last and we don't have a subject then that can correspond with receipt. Okay, look, because that would be an adverb of place, wouldn't it? You remember the... Sentence pattern, subject, verb, complement, complement, full stop. Yes. Look, this is a declarative sentence. Remember, when you are using period or full stop, in American style of writing, always goes inside a quotation mark. So the sentence ends with punctuation mark. But this punctuation mark doesn't come after the quotation mark. It goes inside the quotation mark. This is one 
stylistic error that many writers have. They put the full stop here. An American style of writing APA does not allow us to put the full stop here. So the full stop should come here. Okay. Remember, when you're answering a sentence, just scan it. Bloxy is a capital letter, so a noun. Received verb. Its name from from preposition. Whatsoever comes after that is preposition plus the object of the preposition. It is extra. Just forget about it. So I see the subject and a verb. If I choose this one, so there's a non uh, a noun marker. So it's an article. Tour is a noun. Included is another noun. So I have two nouns, two verbs. This is the second noun. This is the first noun. Two first verb, second verb. Two nouns, two verbs for a sentence without any connector, without any punctuation. So this is wrong. It is in. I have the grammatical subject it and the verb is then I have the subject and a verb for the same reason this is not possible two subjects two verbs without any conjunction located in block C received okay located in block C in is a preposition so the block C is the object of the preposition so here received is the verb where is the subject located cannot be a subject because located is prepositional uh, is uh, participle past participle it's an adjective okay it's a modifying phrase so this is not possible the only choice is choice a through the process of elimination we should find the answers Sir, yes. um, if, if there, there was, was a, a um, comma after Biloxi, could we um, choose the located in Biloxi received its name very, from it? Very good question. Located in Biloxi, comma, received. Located in Biloxi is modifying phrase. It modifies the subject. Where is the subject? Missing subject. I don't see any subject. Is it true? We need a subject here, and this subject should function as a subject for the modifying phrase. That is why the B is not acceptable. And you know, in is a preposition. Can we say, um, yeah? can we can say, we say located, located in Black Sea, the city received, received its name? In that case, you're right. Located in Black Sea, comma, the, the city received its name from a uh, Seox, Seox word meaning first place. We don't have, remember, in when you are taking tests, you don't have time to read the test. We never ever read the test. We just see the lexical categories from preposition, whatsoever comes after that is either adjective or adverb. Adjectives or adverbs are modifying words. We need subject and verb. These are more important elements and these are the core of the sentence located in Biloxi comma the city received its name okay the city located in Biloxi and it's received in that case Biloxi should be meaningful geographical place which is Larger than a city, it is uh, a province, it is a state, in that case. باید یه جایی باشه که بزرگتر از شهر باشه که شهر در اون قرار گرفته. باید یک کشوری باشه، یک ایالتی باشه. بس از نظر معنایی هم باید منطقی باشه. اگه بخوایم جمله رو بسازیم. So for the reasons I told you, 
two subjects, two verbs, so C and D are incorrect. N is a preposition, so the block C is the object of the preposition, so there is no subject, missing subject. For this reason, this is not acceptable, so choice A is the best choice. Let's move on with the second one. Okay. Uh, again, Sogan Sina RF. It's choice, it's choice A. a. Choice A. Just just type. I can't see the screen. It's not appearing for me. You don't see the screen. Yeah, yeah I can't. I have the book though. Um, is it the, is it the a part of lines one? Okay. So yeah, it, it is uh, on page one o six, question number three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you find the book? Did you find it in the book? Yes, yes, yes. Very good. It's number three. So, um, RF says it is A. Sina, what's your idea? I think, I it's, think a it's A because, because choice, choice D, D uh, the, the sentence doesn't, doesn't sound right. A pride of lions containing up to 40 lions, lions okay. including uh, one to Sina, thank you so much. Uh, so, again, which one is correct? Uh, a. a. A is correct. Let's let's see what is the best choice. A is a noun marker. So the pride is a noun. It is the first noun. So I found my subject. Of lions. Of is a preposition. Lions is the object of the preposition. They confuse us with the object of the preposition and the preposition. And they are intervening elements, so they are extra. Just forget about this. Pride of lions. Galle shirha. Pride means galle, group, group of lions. Okay? So, pride is singular. If I take this containing, it is not a verb. It is a verb form. So, this is wrong. Because I don't see any other verb in the sentence. Up to 40 lions. Preposition... With the object of the preposition extra, including, including is a prepositional, this is a parenthetical expression, including, I will talk about the parenthetical expressions, including one, two, three males. It comes within this, several females and cops. So as you see, up to 40 including one or three males, several females, and cops. So this is parenthetical. So this is parenthetical expression. So can, so can we, we say, say a pride, pride of lions, lions contains, contains up to 40 lions. lions? Yes. Look, so far, this is extra. And again, up to four lions, preposition with the object of the preposition, Extra, no verb. We need to find the subject and verb. So, this is extra. A pride. I do apologize. A pride is the subject. It requires a verb. Contain. Contain is a verb, but there is no subject verb agreement. Because pride contains. That is why this is not correct. And this is not a verb. If we choose choice B, we will have two subjects for one verb. Again, it's not acceptable. The only choice is, as so again said, A. Okay? Can contain. Can is a modal verb and it requires the very infinitive form of the verb. So the choice A is the best choice. Clear? Okay. For this, all of you answer. How much on type book on Just type. Sir, I think it's No, deep. just type. Just type. All of you. Just type.
Good. Choice D. Let's ask Nastaran Vahid Pega. Nastaran. Yeah. Good. Nasaran, why not A? Uh, because it would be singular, but our verb is... Excellent. Plural. We have the verb. This is the verb, R. And D is a noun marker, so the T is a noun. So what is plant? Plant is a noun, and noun can be a noun marker. So this is my subject. Plant is my subject. And the plant is singular. It requires a singular verb. So the plant R. This is wrong. Why not B? Because, because we will have a subject. Very good. We need something on the T plant. On is a preposition. There is a non marker. So the T plant plant is the object of the preposition. There is no subject. حرف اضافه با مفعول حرف اضافه کلش میشه قید اسمی هم که بعد از حرف اضافه اومده مفعول مفعول حرف اضافه است پس فایل هم کو so choice B is wrong having flowers we talked about gerunds a verb can be in ing form and it can function as the subject if we have having flowers as the subject there is no comma between the subject and the verb and I don't see any comma but gerunde mitune esm bashe but immediately after that we have the plant so I will have two subjects for one verb again wrong as you sir, all sir, correctly excuse me, said can I ask a question yes uh -huh. um, um, I, wanted I wanted to ask, to ask would, it would it be possible to actually add an, add an S at the end of plant? plant. Okay. I mean, uh, uh, making the sentence in a way that we can read it as having flowers, the tea plants are small and white. Actually, I mean adding an S at the end of the plant and a comma after flowers. Is it going to be white? In that case, we need to put a comma here. Yeah. yeah. Having flowers, the tea plant requires an S. So the tea plants are. In that case, this construction is quite correct. And it is not dangling construction because tea plants can function as a subject here. The tea plants have flowers. When we say having flowers means the tea plants have flowers and the tea plants yes, exactly. are the small tea plants is the subject. that's in that case tea plants is the subject and having flowers is the modifying phrase thank you so much thanks a lot sir you're welcome next one all of you answer all of you just type the answer Okay, I see the different choices. I see A, and many of you answer correctly. C, C is the best choice. Very good. Remember, when you are answering any question in the structure section of grammar, okay, look at the commas. The commas are very important. When you see there are two commas and immediately after the comma there is a verb are used, we can understand there is an intervening element here. So there is a noun marker, tetracyclines is a noun and it is the subject of the sentence. Okay? It is plural and it agrees with the verb. So what should I put here? I can have many things here. If I choose A, this is wrong because I will have two verbs and there is no connector. So this is wrong. Being a family, again, 
this is not correct. You might say being a family, being is a gerund, a family of antibiotics. Okay, so this is not correct because we need an appositive. An appositive is a non-form, not a verbal. There is no verb form. It is a non-group. A family of antibiotics. گروه اسمیه هیچ شکل فعلی توش پیدا نمیشه. And it identifies tetracycline. It tells us more about the tetracycline. It tells that the tetracyclines are antibiotics. So, if I choose their family is, I will have subject and a verb and subject and a verb. Two subject and verbs. This way is not acceptable. We have one subject and one verb in a sentence. And possible complements. Let's go with the next one. All of you please answer. Any possible academic assistance from taking the stimulants marginal at best? Very good choice. C is the best choice. Why not A? Let's see any words of indefinite quantity, possible, adjective, academic. It's a noun and at the same time adjective, assistance noun. So I found my subject. This is subject. From preposition. Taking stimulants, okay, so from taking stimulants, object of the preposition, so between the subject and the verb, I have intervening elements, marginal, adjective, at best, prepositional phrase, so here I need a verb, something is missing, verb is missing, if I choose A, two subjects and a verb, if I choose there is, so there is, either comes at the beginning of the sentence or at the beginning of the clause. There is no clause here. Okay? So this is not acceptable. The verb is missing and choice C is correct. As is not a verb. The next one, Henry Adams. How many Excellent. Thank you so much. Henry Adams is proper noun. It is the subject. Born in Boston. This is non. Uh, this is adjectival clause. Reduce adjectival clause. Who was born in Boston? Who? or who is born or who was born when you reduce adjectival clauses you drop the connector which function as a subject at the same time and a be verb so we have born in Boston so this is nothing extra information Henry Adams a singular subject requires a verb famous as a historian I don't see any verb so I need a verb it is in the past tense, so A is the best choice. If I choose B, this is wrong because AND is a coordinate conjunction. It shows that when you have AND, it shows that it conjoins two grammatically identical units. After that, became famous as a historian and novelist. Before that, born in Boston. Okay, so where is the verb for Henry Adams? I don't see any verb. I have born in Boston and became famous historian. Two grammatically identical units, two verbal phrases. But where is the, sub where is the verb for this subject? That is why B is not acceptable. 
If I choose C, I will have two subjects for one verb. This is not acceptable. If I choose A, and immediately uh, D, and immediately after and, I see subject and verb. So there is a comma, comma and subject verb, so independent clause. But before this, I don't see any independent clause because clause has its own subject and verb. So it doesn't conjoin two grammatically identical units. So D is not acceptable. A is correct. فقط باید با آنالیز بریم تحلیل هیچ سوالی نیست که نشه من چون الان دارم به شما توضیح میدم انقدر طول میکشه هر کدوم از اینها زیر هشت ثانی اتفاق میفته تمام تست های آیلت رو شاید سه هزار توفل در از پیپر بیس رو نزدیک سه هزار تا تست گرامر رو چهل تا چهل تا تایم گرفتم و زدم همش زیر ده دقیقه اتفاق میفته زیر هشت دقیقه هم من رکورد دارم این شدنیه وقتی که شما بتونین تحلیل بکنین و وقتی که چهل تا سوال رو زیر ده دقیقه بتونی بزنی در حالی که زمان هستش 25 دقیقه است شما زمان داری بذاری برای ریدین کامپرینشن و کلوز تست و جاهای دیگه خب به نظر میرسه که کلاس دارین و من دو تا سه تا آیتم دیگه هم مونده و شما الان کلاس دارین بلا فاصله بعد از من Do you have any class? RF, uh, Amir Ali, there is no class? Very good. So if you don't have any class, and uh, we started the class with 10 minutes delay, so let's continue. Good news. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, will you please answer this question? Which choice? Excellent. Choice B is the best choice. Let's see why. خانم تنین آقای سپه راجیپور آقای سینا گلزاده ابراهیمی تنین سپه سینا تنین سپه سینا Seper. Yes, sir. Very yes, sir. good. Uh, Seper, what is your answer? Which choice is the B. best B. choice? Choice? B. B. Choice B. Will you please just uh, uh, sp speak somehow slowly? Okay, it's too loud. It's my, it's my microphone. Yeah, yeah, there's sorry. something wrong with the microphone. Okay, just, yeah. Yeah, I'm just sorry. keep it uh, okay. somehow okay. away I'm from it. Very good. Uh, What is the subject here? It's it's a uh, major major cause, cause actually. Cause is the subject. Very good. Separate. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, it is just bothering my ears. Okay. It's irritating, uh, it's irritating right? Let, let let me ask someone else to join. Okay. Khanim Tanin, Agay Sina, Sina Gadampur. Will you please you unmute your mic? Yeah. yeah. Very good. So it shows that some of the students are present here, but they're not in the class. Okay. I was expecting you to move the class. Well, the major cause. See now. Yes. I yes. Know. I think, um, except, except for choice, choice B, B other, ones other ones are uh, plural, plural, so it will not make sense, sense because the major cause is singular, and B is also, also singular, singular. But the other but ones, tied and uh, 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 are plural, in my opinion. Thank you so much. Very good. Uh, anyway, 
look, we need to find the subject first. What is the subject? The major, the major cause. Cause is the subject because there is a non marker, it is the article. Major is an adjective, again another mo non marker. So the first noun is cause. This is our subject. There is article. So the pool is not a verb, it is a noun. Of is a preposition. So whatsoever after that is object of preposition. So something is missing here, and that is verb. If I choose A, I have the verb. But I have two subjects, so this is wrong. If I choose choice C, I have subject, then object of the preposition, and then another object of the preposition. Where is the verb? No verbs. Choice D, there is a non marker, oceans. This is a possessive form. So the tides is a noun. This is second subject. Where is the verb? No verb. The only choice is this one. And we have singular subject, singular verb. And here in between, we have intervening element of ocean tides, which is an adjective, which post modifies the cause. Clear? We have a couple of more to answer. Then I will say goodbye to all of you. Answer all of you. D, D, what else? D, D. No A, no B, no C. Okay. What is the best choice? Choice D. Let me ask. Pega. Pega, will you please unmute your mic? Uh, yeah, because we need a subject and a verb. Uh, so A is only a verb and B is inverted. And C has two subjects. So the best one is B. Okay. When you are reading a sentence, look at this prompt. This is prompt, okay? There is a comma. There should be a reason for any comma. If you see a comma, so the beginning part should be an adverb. Or the beginning part is an appositive. Or this... There is immediately after this one of the coordinate conjunctions, so two independent clauses. So I don't see any and here, any of the fanboys here. So this is not correct. The only choice shows that this is still a novelty in the late 19th century. Okay? It is a modifying mm -hmm. phrase. It is an adverb. Okay. So nothing. Forget about this. Limited to rich. Kuta kalem dige. Ma bayad bare bone structure ro peda bukanim. File of fail ro. Bare bone structure man ine. Her chizi ke ezafas min dazam ishtur. Dalil barish bayt dashte basham. In kama inja bar chiu mande. پشتش می کردن کنجانکشن که اینها رو به هم بس بکنه نیست آیا قبلش modifying phrase بله پس بازم اضافه است modifying phrase ها اضافه است اپازیتیفه بله اضافه است پس میندازم اش کنه بسه نمیخونم برام مهم نیست از اینجا و بعد میخونم من باید دنبال فایل و فیل باشم این کسا فایل اولش نیست این هم که اولش فایل نیست یا اینه یا اینه it was photography limited to the reach photography was limited to the reach خب من چویس سی رو انتخاب کنم یا دی رو انتخاب بکنم 
D. Because it's still a novelty in the late 19th century, is an appositive. There is no verb form. Hech شکل فعلی تو اینجا نمیبینیم. اینجا حرف اضافه پشتش مفعول حرف اضافه است. اینجا هم که ناولتی اسم گروه اسمیه. گروه اسمی بدل داره آیدنتیفای میکنه. یک چیز رو باید آیدنتیفای بکنه. ای تو که نمیتونه اصلا ایت خودش دامی هست. فائل فائل لاجیکال هم که نیست. چی هستین؟ اکسپلیتیو هست. بس بنابراین فوتوگرافی رو باید مادفای بکنه ایدنتفای بکنه So still a novelty in the late 19th century Photography was limited to reach So the photography is the subject And this part is an appositive So the choice D is the best choice Is it clear? So can we say yeah? um, um, it, was it was photography that was limited to the reach it, Anyway, in that case again we should find a reason for including this part why is it here what is it it is an appositive اصلا دلیل اصلی که ما توی رایتنگ های آیلتس همون میبینیم حتی بچه های زبانی میرن هفت به زور هفتونی میشن این هست که از ذره گرامری رایت نمیکنه. بدل آورده خیلی خوب نمرش هم میبره ولی بدل برای زمیر نمیاد بدل برای اسم میاد اینجا باید اسم باشه این زمیره بدل با زمیر نمیاد This is pronoun We never use an appositive to identify a pronoun We use an appositive to identify a noun So it was a photography that's limited to ridge okay this sounds logical but in isolation not here because there is context clue and this shows that here we have an appositive and appositive identifies the noun not the pronoun that is why choice C is not acceptable didn't Dalilish چقدر مهمه این نکته نا هر کدومش okay this is the last one and then we will uh, finish the class what is the answer all of you please just type the answer Excellent. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Thank you so much. But this is a very good question. Look, it is declarative sentence. I don't see any comma. A is a non-marker computerized is an adjective map is a noun I found my subject this is the subject of the freeways prepositional phrase nothing using information this is an adjective which modifies the freeways gathered by sensors Another prepositional phrase which modifies information. Embedded in the pavement. Again, embedded is an adjectival clause which modifies sensors. So I didn't find any, any verb so far. On is a preposition on a local cable channel during rush. So, what is missing? Verb is missing. Subject is singular. To air is infinitive. Air is noun and verb, but it is plural. A ring is either an adjective as a present participle or a noun. Okay, 
So it cannot be a verb. The only choice is choice A. Didn't چقدر راحت با حسف اناسور به فعلم رسیدم قرار نیست من این رو همه رو دونه دونه بخونم و معنی بکنم با دونستن روابط به راحتی میتونم هر چیز رو نقشش رو پیدا بکنم و پاسخش رو بدم خب uh, So far is so good We did up to scale 6 On page 107 Please do all the exercises there are, there are five different exercises here in each section for skill one we have exercise one we have exercise two for skill two exercise three for skill three and exercise uh, uh, four for on page 104 and 103 Then we have exercise 5 on page 105 and on 106 again we have uh, exercise for skills 1 to 5. Please do this at home. All of you should do this at home. And then we have the uh, next session we will start from sentences with multiple clauses. Thank you so much.